Hey everyone, I uh, just wanted to make a video about the 5.0 Base Magician update cycle. There's a few more features I plan to add here in the in the future, like pathfinding. There's a couple other things I want to polish up, but I thought it was important to get these features out. So all the groundwork's being laid, and uh, it's a new, a whole new new feature set. So figured out up to, to the 5.0 cycle. The uh, first thing's relatively minor. I uh, cleaned up the gizmo a little bit so it's not going to clip into the walls if you leave it on after a maze is generated. Um, the inspector I've improved. There's uh, some back-end efficiency improvements and there's some refactoring I did so the code's a little bit cleaner. Although there's a couple places I think where the, the commenting is now a little bit sparse especially around some of the new uh, new methods I've added. Uh, you'll notice that there are default values here for wall height and floor thickness, where these used to be concrete values. You now have variable height on wall pieces and variable thickness on floor pieces. I'll show you a little bit of that in action here if I take... Um, This wall, this wall, this wall, Let's punch in their heights. And I'll take a couple more floor pieces. This one, this one. And we, uh, we generate a new maze. You'll see that the walls a variable height but they're still going to stick to the floor and the floor pieces in the other direction can be variable as well which might be an aesthetic you're looking for but another thing you can do with this actually which is kind of handy is if you want to have let's say you have wall pieces that you want to float um, maybe some sort of magical magical walls or you want your floor to be jagged on the inside, you just have to decrease your values or increase for the opposite effect. Some of these, some of these pieces here. Now when I generate the maze, you see that some of the walls are floating off the ground. And if we get inside, some of the floors are, are raised. Of course, uh, there's going to be some clipping issues if you try to do that with the floors. It's always going to be better to model them the way you want and set your pivot points and just use the actual thicknesses of everything but it does just give you uh, slightly more options a little more control over the maze I know a few people were asking for things like this just for a different kind of aesthetic now the big thing I've added here as well that caused a lot of the refactoring to need to be done besides changing the the data types here a little bit was I added some differentiation in the in the walls so traditionally all you've been able to do is add you know however many different variations you want and have the walls randomly placed throughout the maze but now I've added a way to differentiate the junctions in walls and the end pieces of walls. So if I take these, those are already set up nicely, and I regenerate the maze. Now you see that anything that's at the end of a wall segment is going to pull from this pool instead of the default pool. And anything that's at a junction is going to pull from, from this pool. So just add some more variation. There's again some users asking for. Um, a way to discriminate so when it was when the maze was generating they could add pillars at junctions and things like that so now you have that option here and if we collapse some of these if we create a braid maze which is deleting the dead ends you'll notice that it uh, it's a post process that happens so these uh, these will update accordingly. Other than that, uh, the big thing that
that's going into a future update is these uh, nodes that I'm that I'm adding to everything. So all of the floor pieces are getting a node component during generation, and this node component stores things like what uh, what's at this tile. And you see here, this is a corner wall, so it says that's uh, that's the type there. Coordinates. This is the in the zero zero position. And it's got connections. So if I want to go up, it's actually designed the the nomenclature is based on a top down view. I can go up in the connections, I can take connections right, back down. So obviously this is going to help with pathfinding. And being able to know what type of node we're looking at is going to be handy. Just so you know if it's a wall or something. So if you're pathfinding from here to here, you can use a recursive algorithm and work your way uh, work your way through the maze and I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is gonna I'm gonna return a list of nodes from the start to the end give you a path to follow and then you could implement some sort of AI that uses that path and uses those nodes as waypoints to get to locations throughout the maze or if you want to solve a maze or anything of course the location data is going to be tied to these floor pieces. And the reason I use floors instead of a combination of floors and walls is because the entire maze gets a, gets a floor. And if you generate an exit, then you get this exit piece here. So I'm going to work on this a little bit, figure out exactly how I want to do pathfinding. But I just wanted to do some performance tests with uh, this node generation in the uh, during the instantiation step, and I'm thinking about working on some real time modifications so you can handcraft the maze a little bit. You know, if I want to change this into a different type of wall, being able to do so via that this floor node here, or even possibly this this map here, because this is the the map that's generated and used to decide what needs to be instantiated. It's a one-dimensional array processed as if it were a two-dimensional array using the standard flattening formula. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what's in this new update. If there's any questions, as always, shoot me an email. Hopefully you're having a uh, an excellent time with this or you're thinking about buying it and <laughs> I guess you're going through all the all the videos right now to see what exactly this is capable of. But uh, have a good one.